Today, we're going to be talking about an interesting casual paper that has to do with, drumroll, aliens. This is a paper from the group of international researchers led by Indian ones to try and understand and identify the best way to hunt down alien civilizations. The paper is a step in the process. For some context, there are things that we do need to understand about hypothetical alien civilizations that we're searching for before we get into the nitty-gritty of the paper. And then we'll see if, hey, we actually know how and where to look for advanced alien civilizations. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence has been ongoing for a while. We know just by looking at numbers and probability that it is impossible that we are the only intelligent life out there in the entire universe or in the entire Milky Way galaxy, right? That will make us way too special than we are, which is just a lucky and organic coincidence in the grand scheme of time and space. So it is only logical that we start searching for others like us, if not as smart or smarter than us, at least more primitive than us. However, with the technology that we have, it is much easier to look for civilizations that are way more advanced than us because they will leave unmistakable signatures of artificially generated intelligence which our primitive technology can still capture. These signatures of advanced civilizations that are more intelligent than us are often theorized to be in the form of structures that are built by these civilizations wherever they are and sent to space. We have satellites around the Earth, we have spacecraft flying out in various directions in the solar system and all of these emit signals. So if there were other spacecraft nearby, they would be able to detect these. Similarly, a more advanced civilization will have bigger structures to harness large amounts of energy to run their gigantic habitable systems, right? Planetary-wide systems. One such hypothetical structure was proposed in the 1960s and it is called the Dyson Sphere. The Dyson Sphere is a very popular pop culture reference when it comes to aliens and it is actually a structure that is made up of multiple cells of various sizes, typically extremely large sizes, and these cells are in multiple orbits around a star. These cells are used to harvest energy from the star. Just like we moved from, you know, wood and fire to fossil fuels and then realizing, hey, we actually need this planet to live. So let's do stuff where we can harness natural energy. And what better source of natural energy than the host star that never goes out and will not go out in our lifetime in the future. So now we use solar and we've already begun to use geothermal energy, which is tapping into the planet's energy. And then we also are using wind and water. That is still a very, very, very small extent of what we can theoretically do with renewable energy on the planet. And when renewable energy technology becomes even more advanced, it can store even more energy. Here is where the next level of civilization comes in. We theorize that alien civilizations of various intelligence levels would build various structures of different scales. In this paper, we are looking at Dyson spheres. Physicist Freeman Dyson came up with the concept of Dyson spheres, where as energy requirements for a civilization increased, they would be increasingly systematically beginning to harvest energy from their local star to fulfill their energy needs. A side note is that Dyson himself did not like these hypothetical structures being named after him. So even though he didn't like the name Dyson swarms or Dyson spheres, here we are, we're still stuck with it and that's what we use. We are assuming that a logical step to finding out civilizations more advanced than us, given how we grow, is that there will be structures around their star that are harnessing energy. And we operate with this assumption. And now finally, we come to this new paper. This paper has come out in the context of all of the other papers before and the other work that has been done in searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. This is different from searching for extraterrestrial life. It is a subset. 
we are already searching for extraterrestrial life close to us by sending spacecraft to Mars to find fossils of past microbial life or by launching next generation space telescopes such as the James Webb Space Telescope which looks for signatures of water vapor or methane in exoplanets, planets that are outside of our solar system but within the Milky Way. This paper extends it. It is still looking within the Milky Way but is looking for intelligent life, advanced life. This paper is a part of what is called Project Hephaestos, which is named after the Greek god of fire and energy and metallurgy. As a part of this collaboration, multiple institutes and experts are coming together to find Dyson spheres and other forms of advanced civilizations outside of our solar system. The most famous example of looking for intelligent life is, of course, SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, where we are sending out radio signals hoping that an advanced life form that is as intelligent if not more intelligent than human civilization can get the signal and respond or at least pick it up and then what happens we will have to wait and see not a lot of people think this is a great idea especially transmitting our location out to civilizations that are probably much more powerful and intelligent than us many think it's dangerous but others think it's necessary in that context, the new study is now looking at stars which could potentially harbor Dyson spheres to tap the energy of their star. The paper starts off by talking about how the existence of Dyson spheres doesn't need the aliens to be willing to reach out to us, to be in contact with us or for us to be able to detect them, beginning on a very dangerous note already. Now, how does someone detect Dyson spheres. The logic itself is easy. Dyson spheres are extremely large physical structures that go around a star. This is how we detect alien planets already, exoplanets that are outside of our solar system. When a planet transits in front of a star, we can see a dimming of its light. The same here. We will constantly be noticing fluctuations in how much of a star's light and energy reaches us if there are large structures that are orbiting it and thus blocking out the light. With this logic, there have been continuous and ongoing efforts to search for Dyson spheres around stars since at least the early 80s. This paper approaches it by looking at data from sky surveys, telescopes that orbit the Earth and survey the sky, fix their gaze on one point of the sky for large periods of time and then come out with data. And they do this for the skies all around us. This, of course, once again focuses on star systems that are within our Milky Way galaxy. We have equipment that can detect now, not just visually, but also in various infrared wavelengths, which let us look at stars that are otherwise not brightly visible to our optical astronomy. In this paper, the scientists focus on partial Dyson spheres, which are structures that are not perfected and would still emit waste heat in the form of infrared radiation, which then our instruments from Earth, near Earth, can pick up. Using data from the Gaia Sky Survey, 2 Micron All Sky Survey or TUMAS and the WISE Infrared Telescope data or WISE, the authors of the paper have been able to narrow down the candidates that could potentially have non-perfected Dyson spheres orbiting their star. In the paper, there is a lot of mathematics and signal processing and elimination, but it ultimately concludes by listing out a number of stars that could be candidates for hosting Dyson spheres among the thousands and thousands of stars that they analyzed. That's the conclusion of the paper. But what is the significance? Does it mean that the aliens are here? Now, look, the answer to is it aliens is always no. It's a strong and vehement no. It doesn't really make sense to say no like this because probabilistically we are no way the only life to exist in the universe or in the Milky Way. But understanding technology as we do now and knowing how much we don't know and what we can't make, at this point experts believe that we are alien free in terms of our access to universe. In the future, we will definitely one day discover intelligent aliens. There is no way that we won't. But it's most likely not today and it probably won't be in our lifetime. So what exactly does this paper show then? Does this paper mean that there are aliens around these handful of stars far away from us? Not at all. It's not aliens. It is most likely not. 
they themselves in fact clarify it in the paper however the way to interpret this paper and the findings is like this if we had to start searching for advanced alien civilizations little green men and alien people who are smarter than us here is a good place to start these are the candidates where we have to start looking to see if there are aliens and that is what the paper shows now at the end of the day this is how most of our hunt for aliens is going at the moment we haven't found anything at all not at all but we keep finding little clues that we hope we can put together and build up into a series of mandatory parameters to finally be able to see aliens one day whether they are intelligent or microbial today we are doing this in the form of programs like seti and project hephaestos and while they can seem too fantastical or practical for us today they will one day merge to become the mainstream methodology in our search for life in the galaxy and universe perhaps when we start building our own dyson spheres